All right, so I'm Ethan. And I'm Thomas. Fuck and no. yeah, I'm Ethan Whitaker. Our lab is on paper airplanes and how to make the best one. So the purpose of this lab was to determine how the shape and the distribution of mass along the airplane affect the distance and the time of a flight. We also looked at how the center of mass and center of lift affect these. And we decided that our hypotheses would be, if the surface area of the wings is increased, then it will fly longer, because there's more lift. And if the mass of the system is more toward the front of the plane, then it will fly farther. OK, so uh, just really quickly, we should probably address lift and drag. Uh, these are both forces, and we have a diagram on the next slide. Um, but uh, when flying, lift is what's making the plane not just fall straight down. It's pushing it up because of air, and it's this equation right here. Um, and drag is what's pulling the plane down, kind of the opposite of lift. Um, unfortunately, we, yeah, yes. I thought gravity was pulling the plane down. Well, the gravity is pulling the plane down, but drag is slowing the plane down. Yeah, drag is opposing motion. Opposing the what? Motion. So it's kind of like friction. It is. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to actually calculate these because we do not know the coefficients of lift or drag for a paper airplane because they're all a whole little different. And it's like a whole lab in and of itself. You should have called Nick. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so we thought that uh, uh, when lift was equal to m, so gravity, the force of gravity plus drag, it'll uh, go for the longest time. Because if lift is too great, the plane will just go straight up, kind of fall. But if it's too small, then it'll just kind of go straight down. Yeah, so the rest of the forces together should balance out that lift. This is, yeah, that's kind of like our diagram about that. So we have a free body diagram here with the lift and the drag and mg. And those two forces are going to oppose the lift force. And we want those to be equal so the plane will fly straight for as long as possible. So here's our setup. We were just in the back of the room there. We had a, um, a carpet square where you could stop your hand and you wouldn't go past that any of the times. And you throw the plane and you got to there. And then we measured the distance and timed the runs. We measured the displacement. That's another thing we yeah. should have tried to address. Not all the planes flew straight every time. Yeah. They would curve. Um, so that's one of the reasons we measured time. Uh, and we didn't measure, or like, because if a plane goes in a circle, it's traveled a further distance, but um, it hasn't actually done any displacement. All right. So those are all the different planes we tested. Um, yeah. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, number six isn't even on this list. It was really crappy. It yeah. went straight back each time. <laughs> and we had no displacement or negative displacement. And we really couldn't do anything with the plane. But the rest of these all were fine. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. So these are some data tables, uh, we have the plane number, and then we have the displacement and the time. Uh, so as you can see over here, uh, plane seven and four were both the ones that flew the farthest over here. Um, by, and seven, I think, yeah, and by like quite a bit, some of them didn't do really well. Nine was our control, because uh, like, it's a. That's this one. This is the plane that most people know how to make. It's it's just the average, quintessential essential paper airplane. There you go. And uh, for those who didn't see that, it just nose died. Yeah. Uh, so with the time, again. Oh wait, let's see. Yeah. So eight and. Oh no. Yes. Eight and five? Yeah. Eight and five did, oh no, seven. There's seven again. Is your data surprising you? Yeah, eight and seven. Mm. 
uh, flew, uh, were in the air the longest. And we think that's because um, this one's eight. This one, uh, they, they uh, had large wingspans. Uh, so they like could glide for a long time. Okay, so then we decided to calculate the center of mass and the center of lift because time and displacement were, well, time wasn't unreliable, but displacement was because you can come back around and not be linear at all. And we calculated the center of mass by balancing them, each paper airplane, on a small pole and finding out where that center of mass was for each plane and then averaging three times. And by center of lift, we held the plane in front of a fan and found the one point where you can hold it, where it balances. And um, in a lot of the planes, the center of mass was around 50% toward the front, except for in plane seven, where it was more like 62% toward the front. We found that interesting. And the center of lift tended to be a little closer to the back, but not not quite. It was they're all around fifty percent. Except for number seven. Yes, except for number seven. We can go back to that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, number seven, center of mass and the center of lift were by the front. Oh, okay, so these are our graphs of uh displaced, so like the distance, the displacement of the plane, and the flight time, which is the surface area, the wings, and they are not good. Like, there's not really a trend that we could find. Um, yeah. So these really didn't help improve hmm. much, which is a bummer. But this, this graph is kind of interesting, because we do know that planes 4 and 7 worked the best, and um, so this is plane seven and this is plane four. The red is the center of lift and the blue is the center of mass. <gasps> and on both of them, they're right on top of each other. So that led us to believe that um, the closer that those two were together, the further plane would go, or the better the Just plane would be. Yeah. It's, a, it's a more balanced paper airplane. Yes. Is it also interesting that the blue dot is always hi uh, higher up than the red? Yes, that's another thing. We read that, uh, like we did a little bit of research about this, and uh, like the guy that has the world record for like the longest paper airplane flight said that the center of mass should be in some front of the center of lift if you want the plane to actually work. Yeah. And that's, blue. I don't see the label for blue and red didn't show up. Oh, Remind me again which one's which. So red is Oh, the there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. And then, yeah, this is another try at getting better data, but displacement versus time aloft, it's like, again, just again, not helpful. Okay, so um, we found the center of mass versus the center of lift here. Like, in, with each plane, they were in different places, but four and seven, they were very close to each other. And if they had them closer together, it was seven. Here's seven, and that was four. They do better. So there really isn't any accepted value for the flight of a paper airplane. So we had to use um, standard deviation for this. And displacement, uh, 3.1 meters on average, plus or minus almost a meter. And um, the time, they, on average, they flew 1.09 seconds, plus or minus 35 centimeters. So the error was pretty high, about 30 to 35% most of them. Okay, so yeah, so then we actually, we tried to rank the planes to get more scientific data stuff. Um, so on the far, far over there, we have the plane number, and then so, do we do the highest? No, the uh, lowest the lowest, lowest number is the like the best. Like golf. Yeah, like golf. Um, so 
with the plane that had the smallest surface area has the smallest number. The plane that has the smallest displacement has the smallest, or the biggest displacement went the farthest has the smallest number, and so on with the center of its mass and all this stuff. And so then we just added them all up, and so the planes with that had smaller numbers were deemed better. Better. So uh, seven and four were the best planes using our ranking system. So the correlations and the graphs of distance versus time were really hazy and didn't make a whole lot of sense. So we had to go onto the graphs of um, that compared the center of mass and the center of lift distance from 100% and 0%. And um, planes with the least difference in these numbers flew a lot better and straighter, more linear paths and didn't curve. And these plane rankings are consistent with our ideas before we before we perform the experiment because um, actually number four was, was the go-to plane that, that Tom made in the beginning of his experiment. Number seven was the go-to plane that I made. So huh. this is four and this is seven. We just kind of already knew which planes to make, I guess. Um, and the control plane, number nine, the one I just threw over there somewhere, was actually not very good. It didn't work. It's more like a weapon. Yeah. It is more like a weapon. And especially once it gets a bit sharp. Yeah. Messed up, then it doesn't fly at all. And we actually found that the planes with the lock mechanism on them. Oh yeah, so if you yeah. if you can see this, which I don't know because the lighting's um on the bottom of the plane, there's a triangle to like hold it together, and we found that that helped because both of these had that. It probably concentrated mass around that area as well. In the front, where you want it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, uh, just, oh, could you take me way back, uh, to the free body diagram? Way. Way back. It's important to recognize that drag opposes velocity. Oh. Yeah. So drag so, should be going that way. Backwards. Yeah, and so lift just needs to raise it up. So every plane, unless something weird is going on, is going to be slowing down. Right. Throughout the throw. Um, my question is, how did you ensure that you were throwing them with the same speed? Well, we started in the same spot and ended in the same and spot. Just, and just straight forward like that. But maybe one of you has a beefier forearm or something? Well, it was me every time. With the super beefy forearm. Oh, of course. But then, how do you know that you didn't get tired from all those beefy forearm throws? Well, we we didn't do them like all at once. Like we came. You would in. rest. Yes, there was some. Did you between. ice it and stuff? No, there was there wasn't any icing. Okay. But. And throwing paper airplane isn't a particularly taxi exercise. Oh, now you're hurting my feelings. So, yeah, for some people, you know, yeah. what's your deal? Yes. Don't some planes prefer to be thrown more slowly or at a different angle of attack? That is yes. true, yeah. Like these gliding planes. They definitely like to be slower. So did you, did you do did you do that sort of automatically? Did you like angle it up when you had to throw it? Or did you did you try to? Wow. We tried to throw it at the center of the, the center of the centers of mass and lift. That's kind of the point where you hold it like this, like just into it. Huh. We found the point where you try to hold the paper airplane is actually very close to the center. That's and right. I think yeah, we tried to throw them up at like similar angles. Like we didn't do any like this or like straight down. So they're like a little bit up, but not horizontal. So I don't, I don't mean this as a specific um, critique, but really as uh, a realm for a, a whole bunch more experimentation. Yes. One more question? Uh, ben. Just, um, or Colin. Mine was just, like, you said like 60% towards the front. I just want to know exactly what that meant, like from oh. the back 60% up. Okay, well, so say the very back of the plane is 0% yep. and the very front is 100%. 62% yeah. like here. That's okay. right. Yeah. That's good. Okay. 
Okay, so um, you said like when the uh, center of lift and the center of mass overlapped was when it was flying the best. Can you do any research and compare that to the composition of an actual airplane and see if that's consistent? Like, is there an overlap between a paper airplane and an actual airplane? I'm sure there is, but no, we didn't. And the other thing is, real airplanes have the jets in the back. Yeah, of course. So that's going to change something. And on the wings. They're also not shaped like this, <laughs> <laughs> so there's probably other things going on. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Something to look into. Thanks, guys. You can ask more questions later.